in 2006 and tell us that workout and the notes you have on it. 2006? I mean 2016. 2016? Yeah. Why 16? Pick, pick, just go pick a day and a workout. In 2016. 2016. All right. Oh, wow. This is fun. Cause I know I did Island House that year. Is this mine? 40k run. Where's this yours? At three, that's mine. At 357 per yours, kilometer. I think that was They're both mine. mine. You, put mine in the you know we're rolling right now, right? You know this is like this is like very important thing we're filming here. Oh, sorry, my bad. Extremely <laughs> important. Not a high value day, I would say. Give us a good session going into the world record in 2016. This uh, two hour bike workout the next day might be something interesting. You know what the beauty of, of uh, logging workouts too and logging your comments is you can actually go back and see. So here we get, here was what I said. Intended on doing four times 30 with 10 minutes recovery, but got through two and was pretty fried. Attempted third, but perceived exertion was through the roof. Halfway through and cadence was getting really low. Decided to call it a day and try it again next workout. Perhaps combo of three hard bike rides on the weekend, that's the island house, and a long run yesterday, put some fatigue into the bike legs. Yeah, no duh. So anyways, the two times 30s ended up being, the first 30 minuter was 337. No heart rate, unfortunately, because that would have been really cool to see. Second 30 minuter, 333, and then it appears I did a 15 minuter at 331, and then called it a day for a total of two hours at 300 would have been the average with the warm up, cool down, and recovery in between. So, how are you taking data now for lessons you learned in 2018? Well, we you know what the beauty of having logged everything over the last literally, I have everything on here on training peaks since 2013 and then I have a paper record um, of everything pre that all the way dating back to 2009 so the beauty is you can you can look back from your good races and your poor races and see if there's any patterns and uh, fortunately for me there are some some very apparent patterns 2018 having probably the, the least pattern, the pattern being absolute disorganization, randomness, and to be honest with you, just a massive amount of recovery from very little training. Um, I had some epic workouts that were epic in the sense that I did basically three quarters of an Ironman in practice. But unfortunately, while, while doing that and then taking massive recovery, as yes, you would have to from doing that, um, there's also a very large detraining effect that's happening in between. And so Ironman race pace just becomes harder and harder and harder and harder. And then you add in, you know, uh, basically doing things backwards, i.e. going to Kona a month in advance and doing a whole bunch of high-end stuff um, when that should have been done months prior, that, that those types of workouts, doing it backwards, putting in a lot of fatigue under very high heat stress, um, and then detraining uh, on, on a lot, in a lot of other areas, is just a recipe for poor performance, and that is what you saw. So there's no secrets, it's all, if you look in my, my training, it's clear as day, the difference between 2017 and 2018. Uh, and there's, there's, there's no secrets. There's no, I just, I trained poorly. I trained stupidly. Uh, there was no plan, no, no direction. And everything was just scatterbrained. And that's, uh, unfortunately, in professional sport, fortunately we have a quite evolved sport now. And that's just not going to fly against these, these great athletes who are at the top of this sport right now. All train riding. You're what? My best races have all come from seasons and blocks that I spent exclusively on the trainer. So to say that riding outdoors is a necessity or something is untrue. Riding outdoors is going to improve your handling in technical proficiency. But in terms of adaptations, I would say the trainer is the optimal place to ride. So what percentage do you base your 
Well, right now I base it on what the temperature is outside, which is like, I don't know, negative 10 degrees Celsius, meaning I do 0% of my riding outside and running. On the other hand, once it starts creeping up over like 60 Fahrenheit, probably like 50-50, Time to pack. I'm just not a big city person. I like my, uh, obviously, I spend most of my time here by myself in the basement. So I don't know how, uh, uh, how much solitude you're gonna get in a city of, what is it, like six, seven million people in Los Angeles? Um, now, that being said, I have budgeted for a couple of training camps there, but I don't know if I can handle much more than just a couple of training camps, uh, just based on my personality. So, I like to be, have my, you know, small little group, and uh, I like to hibernate, keep to myself, and I will be able to find that, I think, in Oro Valley, which is kind of a hidden little gem that doesn't have too too many people training at. So, that's where I'm headed. Oh no, you're not allowed in here, so. Stay back there, it's hazardous.
You happy with that? Yeah, I haven't done, I haven't done miles at three minutes, three flat, um, in a long time. So, it's just a start, of course. We still got another two blocks, two micro cycles. We want to extend that up to probably about 30 minutes at three flat. But uh, we're moving in the right direction. And generally, and we'll test this when we get outside, but generally I run faster when I go outside. So if we're going three flat on here, getting to 155 heart rate. Outside, that's probably gonna be 257, 256. So it's good. Those are the those are the ones that are absolutely dreadful, absolutely dreadful. Disgusting. Disgusting pain. But if it's disgustingly painful, then it's probably gonna help you in your your race when you go to a significantly lesser pace. Uh, as is the case in the in the Ironman. So what's your next race? Are you gonna race Oceanside? What's next for you? What yeah. are you training for? Yeah for sure Oceanside next up. I mean I gotta get my Ironman qualification in so Oceanside don't get me qualified for Kona and uh, I'm gonna do that qualification early. So, I mean, I'm, unfortunately, one of the problems I've run into in previous years is trying to peak too much for everything, really. And I just, I gotta start focusing on one or two races. I mean, that doesn't mean if you're, if you're properly focused on that one race, then you're going to be in phenomenal shape. But uh, uh, Motion Side will be the first one. But it really is just a stepping stone for my Ironman qualification.